Hey guys, DM Mike here. Hello and welcome to another episode of Super Nintendo Sundays. This is the second of three of the new games, and we're gonna be playing Kirby's Dream Land 3, if you couldn't already guess. This is very classic Kirby. Full disclosure, I don't actually have any experience having played this game before. I haven't. It's my first time playing through this. Actually, the three new games that I'm playing, we're kind of doing a bit of a departure from the first three that I played with Aladdin, Mega Man, and Donkey Kong, with those being games that are familiar to me. These three are not, so I'm trying to mix it up a little bit and play games that I have some semblance of familiarity with in terms of maybe having played another in the series or, you know, just knowing how to very briefly navigate a children's game, for better or for worse. So anyway, Kirby's Dream Land 3, it is the installation of this series for the Super Nintendo. There's the first Kirby that was for the NES, then there was Kirby's Dream Land 2, I think for the Game Boy, and then there's this one, so this is a lot of fun. It's your classic Kirby fair, but this game, like the second installation of Kirby's Dream Land, it lets you have animal buddies, and there were three present in Dream Land 2. There was Rick the Hamster, who is going to be our animal buddy for now. I will introduce the animal buddies as we use them, although that's a bit of a misnomer because I actually don't even remember the majority of the, their names, so I probably should look that up at some point in my life. But yeah, so this is Rick the Hamster. This is a uh, very adorable. That's kind of the theme of, the, of this series, this round of Let's Plays, is every, every game that I'm playing this time around, this trifecta, are games that are universally and undeniably adorable. Also, I should not have destroyed those bricks because I don't have a way to get up there. So this is a weird mechanic too of this game. I'm not entirely sure what this character's name is. Once again, that's going to be another trend that you'll notice as part of this channel as I don't know the names of anything, but you are able to kind of have part of Kirby's essence, life force, whatever, come out and act as sort of like an AI that is supposed to sort of help you. Now, help you is kind of subjective because this slime thing is computer controlled. You don't have any control over what it does. It tries to kind of mimic your, mu your moves, but more often than not, it'll steal your power-ups, it'll steal your you know, placement on the screen, it'll kill enemies that you'd like to have their power, so that's kind of a, a butt thing to do, I'm not a huge fan of it. But yeah, it's not a huge, not a huge deal. I try to typically not use it, I don't really know if I've ever used it on purpose in the brief time that I've been playing this game, probably not. So, in general, though, this is your kind of, your typical Kirby, you know, you can float around, you can suck up your enemies and steal their life force and have them inside you, as we all like to have. And various enemies produce various power-ups. As you can see also in this game, there is obstacles placed, there is, there are obstacles placed in your way that are dependent on the type of creature that you suck, which is kind of neat. But in general, I don't really have a ton of experience with this game. I've just briefly played it to kind of test out and see how it would go. It's once again a Kirby game. Kirby games in general are very easy, very lighthearted, not really too involved on the scale of difficulty, which is why I think it's fun. It makes it easier to play and commentate, etc. Although all of these Super Nintendo Sundays games, for the most part, Sunday, why well, listen to me, Sundays games for the most part are post commentary. So I don't really have an excuse to to not be good at it, what I'm doing. But then again, you also all know that I'm not a tryhard, so there's that. I'm willing to admit that my ineptitude at these games is rampant at times, most often. So I'm just having fun, enjoying myself, kicking back and relaxing, playing some Kirby. I remember really enjoying, I had Kirby's Dream Land 1, which, this is a power-up you can get in Kirby's Dream Land 1, the Magical Lollipop. So, you suck on one of those and 
Kirby goes ape, hopping all around, and he's invincible for a brief amount of time. I also really enjoy that song. That little superpower jingle. That's fun. Yeah, I had a really good experience with Kirby's Dream Land 1. Had that for Game Boy, and, you know, it's a very simple game as we land on whatever the no-no spot is in that weird little level-end minigame. Played a lot of Game Boy as a kid, spent a lot of time in the car, so I wound up becoming very comfortable and used to playing games like this because they were small doses of gameplay that were really fun. You could just pick up and play a Kirby and, you know, before too long you'd be at your destination. That's what really made these games enjoyable, I think, beyond the fact that they're wildly adorable. We can steal that witch's broom and embark on the domestic sciences ourselves. Kirby is quite proficient in the custodial arts. So you can experiment, experiment with all kinds of power-ups. There's the stone power-up, there's the umbrella power-up, there's the flame power-up, which is one of my favorites just because I like to kind of rock it across the screen. It's pretty fun. I enjoy that. And here we get two more animal buddies. Um, Goop Girl and uh, Mini Government Drone. I'm not entirely sure what either of these names are. I think the the animal buddy that is on my head right now is supposed to be like an octopus or something like that, but she's not really as cool as uh, Bird, so we're going to go with uh, Bird. In this game, though, you actually have the option of having multiple birds, so... We are definitely being spied on by the government. And this bird kind of follows you around, especially with the flame power. I think that's kind of neat. So as long as you're moving on the screen, it will continue to be in motion and it'll torch your enemies, which I think is kind of neat. Also, it's very adorable. It's very simple, though. I'm not entirely sure what this is. This um, Kind of looks like a pickle, maybe, or something you'd put in your behind. I don't know. It's a very strange color. Weird little green goop. It looks like a like a snow cone or like some slime had kind of leaked out of the top and the bottom of the cup. Some flubber, perhaps, if you're familiar with wonderful movies. I'm not entirely sure what that's supposed to be. But I thought it was an animal, but it is not. You cannot acquire it, which is unfortunate. But yeah, this game is just very simple and kind of relaxing, very nonchalant. I haven't played enough of it to know whether or not it starts to kind of ramp up in difficulty yet, so I'm trying not to play ahead and spoil it for myself. I'd like to kind of keep my reactions to be untarnished, fresh for all of you. It's really cute, though, that you can ride the bird like an ostrich when you run. I love that. And he carries you up around, although you can't bonk blocks from below when you have bird, so that's unfortunate. There's also porcupines, which I thought was going to be a power-up. It is not. They're just turd burglars that like to impede your progress, but, you know, it is what it is. You might as well try and see. You gotta suck on everything in this game to see what kind of powers they give you. That's a lesson for life, to be honest. Just suck on stuff and see what powers you get. So we've got Bird, and we were able to acquire the Peck ability from these guys. They look like Hershey's Hugs with weird red hats. I don't know. Very strange. That's kind of a theme, though, for Kirby, for those of you who've played it. The enemies don't really make a whole lot of sense. The ones that give you power-ups typically do. You'll see them, and you're like, okay, yeah, like, the things with umbrellas give you the parasol power, or the thing on fire is gonna give you the flame power up. Oh yeah, and the uh, the weird green slushy butt plug thing is very sad for some reason. You hide behind the scenery. I don't know what's his deal, but it looks like he could use a hug, perhaps. Yeah, all of these levels are kind of weird. I remember having played... Okay, I'm just gonna be quiet for a second because this song is incredible. If you don't like the song of this level, you are out of your gosh dang mind. This song is incredible. I love it. 
This is Prime Kirby. But what I was gonna say, as we now get another option of Animal Buddy, we can pick um, uh, Other Bird. I think his name is Koo or Kind the Fish. I actually do know these ones because these are in Kirby too. Rick, Koo, and Kind. I believe those are the names of Kine, however you say the fish's name. They, uh, they're all in Kirby too, and that was the one that I played the most, so I have some familiarity with it. Kirby 2 is a great game, really fun. I feel like Kirby 2 kind of did... It's kind of the best of all worlds. It introduced the Animal Buddies, it introduced the powers in a really fun way. Once again, I haven't played through all of this, so I don't know yet. Maybe I'll enjoy this one more, because it's probably more robust being on the Super Nintendo. Instead of just being black and white or, you know, nasty gradient green that you get from playing the Game Boy back in the day. The OG Game Boy, mind you. The gray brick that you could use to end someone's life if you swung it the wrong way. You gotta be careful with that. So yeah, um, I'm not entirely sure why they gave you access to Kine in a level where- oh, bye. See ya, bye Kine! Why uh, they gave you access to Kine in a level that doesn't have water? I'm pretty sure- now, I could be wrong, because I usually am, but I'm pretty sure that Kine was exclusively in water levels in Kirby 2. So we've got this little mini game here with this snowman wearing a Mario hat. He's gonna throw these little spike balls behind these giant graham crackers and they'll increase in speed and you gotta try to remember which one it was. I'm not entirely sure why this is in this game. It's not really that challenging and it's kind of strange, but he is very pleased with our visual acuity. Being able to pick out what sort of spiky fastball he throws our way. We get three for three because we're epic. And we love that. Now here, you have to fall down in time with the porcupine trails. I don't know what a group of porcupines is. If you do know, please put it in the comments. And you gotta be careful when you're going down here because if you go too fast, you'll die. So that's the first death of the game. Never thought it would be because of that. So you'll die if you go down too quickly. You'll also die if the screen crushes you. So keep those things both in mind. It's a bit of a multifaceted dilemma. But yeah, we've got this family of porcupines going all crazy, running down this slope. The perspective of that is kind of weird for my brain, but um, you know, when in doubt, when you're being chased by large herds of creatures, Unhinge your jaw and just eat all of them. That's how you assert dominance. That's how you Let the wildlife know that you're not afraid of them. So just keep that in mind Whenever you're in the forest perhaps and you're being chased just uh, You know open your mouth as wide as you can and Give them the jump So this is our guy. This is Mario hat snowball who loved our performance so we'll go ahead and take that to the bank with us I don't know if there's anything special about that heart or if you can collect them or whatever but there probably is a way that I'm not going to figure out because I have no clue what I'm doing but that makes this game fun so we'll collect our reward and we'll move on to uh, stage four next time little girl world so thanks for watching everybody I've been D Mike this has been Super Nintendo Sundays with Kirby 3 hope you enjoyed yourselves I'll see you next time Bye.